Welcome one and all to that sweet, sweet sound of nostalgia. I'm Don Hayes, and this is Age of Empires, the Definitive Edition. So we're going to be running all nine campaigns in this game on the hardest difficulty and on very fast game speeds. We're also going to be starting with the Glory of Greece campaign, which is probably the one most people are familiar with anyway. Um, I did a uh, poll um, recently um, off the back of finishing Age of Mythology Retold, which was an incredible series. Like, I had so much fun playing that game. All the nostalgia of that remaster. And uh, the poll was what game people want to see next. And Age of Empires won out with a landslide victory. And so I thought, where better to start than where it all began back in 1997? Um, with the OG game. I mean, this is the remastered edition granted. Um, so there are a number of balance changes, quality of life improvements, uh, pathing upgrades, uh, reworked campaigns. Um, obviously, the visuals are much cleaner, whereas the original game was very pixelated. This is a very clean experience. Um, they did a really good job, actually, with the visuals in this game. Um, and obviously, one of the big ones for me in particular is the support for, for uh, modern systems. The ability to run in 4K resolution on 16.9 aspect ratios. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this is what we're going to be running, um, how we're going to be running it. And I'm just going to, before we begin, just showcase some of the settings that we've got. Um, so we're going to be running on very fast game speeds, which is two times speed. Um, global queues are really nice addition to the quality of life improvements allows you to see all of the units that you're building all of the upgrades buildings etc it's a very uh very nice touch um to sort of modernize the game a little bit without kind of overdoing all the moderns ad like over adding all the modern systems to an old game um obviously we've got the 4k resolutions coupled with the 150 percent ui upscaling um just so that we can all read the texts um, this game is notoriously loud, so the music and the sound volumes are down pretty low. I will be remastering these in um, post anyway, just to make sure that all of the sounds between the game and myself are pretty much where they need to be and, and nicely balanced. And then eye candy or um, graphical fidelity set to high. So folks, with that being said, let's waste no more time and let's get into this campaign. Starting with, like I said, the glory of Greece. So follow the Greeks from their Bronze Age beginnings to the height of the Hellenic era. Step into the sandals of famous Greek heroes like Achilles, Pericles, Xenophon and Alexander the Great to build a civilization spanning the ancient world from the Mediterranean to India. The Mediterranean climate of the Peloponnese region is well suited to agriculture. To thrive and expand in an increasingly hostile world, however, your people must take possession of suitable forage lands. Three other groups already inhabit this area. Of the three, the Pelasgians are the strongest. Establish five farms to sustain the agricultural needs of your people and destroy all Pelasgian farms to deal a crippling blow to your most powerful neighbor. It may be necessary to eliminate the Achaeans or Danans to obtain a foothold in this region before taking the fight to the Pelasgians. Alright, so the objectives are to destroy all Pelasgian farms and build five farms ourselves. We're running on the hardest difficulty. Um, so on higher difficulties, players at the computer attacks earlier, more often, and with larger armies. Let's begin. I'm going to build three houses. Shift clicking on buildings kind of works, but not in the way you'd expect it to. Kind of goes to the last building first. Which is a bit of a choice, but it is what it is. It does at least work in the sense that it does build all uh, all the buildings you want them to. Even if it does take a bit of a janky way of getting there. <laughs> so that's all their military, so now we just take care of their villagers. I want to build a town centre right here next to the trees and the uh, foraging patch. And then we'll just take care of the Danans. All their base are belong to me and all that jazz. <laughs> Got to start with a bit of a cheeky cheeky. Can't be uh, going all, uh, 
pull in on the standard play. So Mate Boy's uh, making a load of noise over there. Alright, so we want to be focusing heavily on wood. Um, wood um, will equate to fishing boats anyway, and we can use the fishing boats to uh, gather the food that we need. Uh, we do need a few people on foraging as well, so we want to be aging up as soon as we can, so we need a surplus of food, and quite a considerable surplus of food at that. Now, the Danans are basically dead at this point. There's not a lot they can do. I am going to build probably up about four fishing boats. Start moving on to um, food production now. So once you finish, you can't shift like can't like shift click um, buildings to go and like gather afterwards, which is a bit of an unfortunate situation. Fish also only provide 250 food, unlike the um, uh, unlimited that it provided in uh, mythology. So at this point, we're going to want to build a storage pit here. Also, want to build a granary. Then we can push our way towards aging up. Once we've aged up, we can build ourselves a little wall to protect ourselves. Checking that actually farming and not um, idling. I know what this game's like. <laughs> so you've actually only got a max population of 50, so we're pretty much at this point going to be focusing almost entirely on military. We actually have a pretty strong economy at this point. I might get like another couple, just like two or three more villagers, but need to start aging up. I've uh, got enough for a market. Oh, I can't build a marketplace yet. Need to age up. <laughs> Forgot that was a thing. I'm going to be building a wall between this location and here, and then we're going to be building a wall from between here and here. Um, the only thing is, we're going to actually leave a spot open so that the enemies kind of are forced into a bottleneck, and then they're fighting on our terms for the rest of the game, pretty much. Because there's a hole in the wall, the enemy won't try to destroy the walls. Some really weird AI mechanics in this game, um, even in the remastered version. Um, yeah, at this point, we can start building a little bit of military. I want at least two barracks. And I want um, to go into archery production thereafter. Also need a marketplace, so we'll go ahead and build that now. Ah, Danon's finally resigned. Enough was enough. Okay, go there. We need to upgrade to axe dudes. Uh, we can't auto queue in this game. That is not a thing. We can rally, but we can't um, rally on top of units just stays wherever they are um, I'm not actually sure how you build gates maybe gates is a thing that you build later on and um, we definitely want to set that as an auto build and um, we need archery ranges next so we're gonna build three of those once we have enough wood 
So you can't actually set rally points until after the buildings are built. Uh, you can build a wall from there, actually. Let's build the wall from... Let's have a look. Go here. Let's go from here. So there. That works for me. All the warriors there, these here. Need to build a load of houses. Should put two more on uh, production. Do -do 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 We're also going to start upgrades. This is the big one. Um, I need a little bit more resources, but um, allows them to cut wood faster, carry more wood, and plus one missile range is the big one. Honestly. How's our fishing going? Fishiko is not far off exhausted. Just got a little bit more left to go. Okay, that's that exhausted. Uh, I'm going to push them onto wood as well. I want to grab that upgrade as well. doing for troops. Oh god, they're almost max capacity already. Or max pop. Alright, I think our wood production's actually getting pretty good now. Put a few on farms. Da 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 da. I think we've got an army large enough to at least do some damage to the enemies. We won't be able to kill, but we've got too much population as it is. Uh, we can't go beyond 50. I'm actually going to delete two of these. More military, yes please. So with A move, you actually have to A move into the enemy. It's a bit of a weird option, a bit of a weird choice, but it is what it is. It's kind of annoying when you kind of want to kite away from the enemy that you have to uh, target your units into them, but... Old game, old mechanics and all that. Although attack move, I think, was added in the remastered, like the uh, definitive edition, so... Kind of an odd choice that you have to A move into the enemy. Consider, <laughs> I guess that is a modern mechanic. Wow, rude. Best overbuild a couple of houses then. Oh, 
So this game is very rock, paper, scissors in um, uh, how, how the units operate. So spearmen beat horses, horses beat archers, archers beat footmen and footmen beat spearmen type of thing. But you have enough troops of one type, it, you can kind of just push through anyway. Um, Axemen are basically my tanks, the archers are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, or at least will be. So the enemy is going to pull a massive army towards us. So we just need to prep for that. Got two different control groups, one for the archers, one for the uh, soldiers, or axemen. Don't really want to be pushing too heavily into uh, the Achaeans. Not really who I want to be taking out. So you don't need to take out their farms, you just need to take out um, the farms of uh, the Pelasgians. Oh wow, decided to push in, huh? the problem with being maxed. Can't build any more troops to defend myself. Alright, what have we got here? Let's get you guys back on farms. Farm. Can't interrupt their economy a little bit. Right back at you, boys. I think this is the only mission that has such a low pop cap. Like, normally I think it's like 200. So the fact that we've only got like a, such a low pop cap is uh, interesting for this mission. On the plus side, fewer workers means more troops. <laughs> so it kind of worked out in our favour in that regard. Okay, fish eco is almost gone entirely. Thanks for the gift of units. Very much appreciated. Global queue is pretty full at the moment, which is nice. We want to be targeting the villagers and not the um, not the farms necessarily, just because the villagers just keep building, rebuilding the farms. It's actually kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> so you target the villagers, they they stop creating uh, farms. And then you just pick on, pick the farms off at your own leisure. And there is a hidden win condition as well in this game where if you get the enemy to resign, um, I think that also gives you a victory. And that normally happens when you kill most of, or if not all of their villagers and... got a big enough army in their base that they literally don't know what to do with it. So basically just bringing all their villagers from their wood eco over. There's one farm over here that I think catches a lot of people off guard as to uh, can you find it, Captain. But yeah, that'll be all she wrote for this uh, first mission, folks. GG's. 
Your victory over the neighboring chiefdoms has ensured that your people have access to the most fertile land available to sow their crops. The Pelasgians, Achaeans, and Danans have all either submitted to your rule or fled into neighboring regions to lick their wounds. Your people can now focus on building settlements, establishing trade routes, and spreading their influence into neighboring areas. Alrighty, folks. Well, thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If this is the kind of content you enjoy, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. It does help support the channel and would be greatly appreciated. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I shall see you in the next video.